For the last three years, in a boat shed in Suffolk on the east coast of England, something wonderful has been happening. Spirit Yachts, purveyors of exquisite wooden sailing yachts, has been designing and building its largest motor yacht ever. The brief on paper sounds simple. 1,000 nautical miles non-stop at an average speed of 18 knots. Getting the Spirit P70 from drawing board to delivery, however, was anything but simple. The yacht is constructed from a lightweight melange of Sapelli ring frames, Douglas Fair longitudinals and 3mm thick Kaya wood veneers. Its light displacement is just 22 tonnes. It's powered by a mere 1,600 horsepower, courtesy of twin MAN i6 800s, for a top speed of 23.5 knots, and that target cruising speed of 18 knots. Four fuel tanks with a total capacity of 10,000 litres are the final piece of the puzzle that gives the owner, who cruises between the south coast of the UK and the Baltic, his desired range. The price? It's totally bespoke, so it's hard to say, but budget between four and five million pounds. It's amazing to think that this boat came from cold hard figures. The owner wanted to travel from here in Southampton to Norway, a thousand nautical miles there or thereabouts at 18 knots without having to stop for fuel. And that's why it made so much sense to come to Spirit. This boat is probably half the weight of an equivalent fiberglass 70, 75 footer. It weighs 22 tonnes. Means that you can have a pair of smaller engines. An equivalent fiberglass boat would be running maybe two and a half thousand horsepower, just a little bit less. This has got two 800 horsepower engines fed by four fuel tanks with a combined capacity of 10,000 litres. And sure enough today we ran her up to 18 knots, looked at the figures, worked out the range, a thousand nautical miles pretty much on the nose. The brief was met. However, it's so much more than just that brief and the cold numbers. It happens to be a beautiful yacht as well. What's it actually like to drive? Well, I think that story is better told from up at the flybridge. Because this is where you want to helm the Spirit P70 from. This fantastic position up here on the top of the boat, you can just see the tip of the bow right back across the aft deck. See the wake streaming out behind you. You can just pick up the tea cappings on the bulwarks. It's a real event, it's an occasion. You stand at this beautiful helm again, wonderful varnish wood light downstairs. You have the mix of the digital and the analog. I particularly like the two analog rev counters, the spirit rev counters you, ha you have here. You can stand really comfortably. You've got a similar size wheel to downstairs, but you can also sit as well. And then the windscreen does a really good job of protecting you. You don't get buffeted and sends the wind over your head. Twin benches here, so you have another person sitting next to you, and there's a twin bench on the other side as well. But for me, I just love this position of standing up here, arm on the railing, looking down the side of the boat, seeing and hearing the water washing past you with just this majestic boat underneath you. It's a really special feeling. And you only have to be cruising at 18 knots to enjoy it. It feels like we're doing half that. It's so serene. You may hear the engines a bit downstairs, obviously they're, they're sort of down there with you, but up here you're detached from them completely. All you can hear is the sound of the water rushing past the hull. And on a day like this, you can cruise miles and miles on this thing. It just hoovers up distances. It makes places that are 100 miles away seem like they're just around the corner. You would cover serious distances in this thing, very happily and very comfortably. One thing I wasn't expecting is quite how engaging it is from the hell. Okay, it's no sports boat, you know, it's not going to outrun the Sunsea Competitor 74, but it's really keen from the helm. The steering is really light, but it reacts well. We're in a busy channel here, and I'm not worried that I'm suddenly not about to move out of the way of a, of a yacht. It's very easy to change direction, despite the fact that you've got you know, the Humphrey interceptors and you've got the vector fins working as well to keep the boat on the straight and narrow. It all feels very natural. You set the throttles. What are we doing here? 2,300 RPM, 1718 knots on the nose, 180 litres an hour, and you're set. It's what the boat was designed for, and it achieves that effortlessly. This position is also where you want to be when you're coming into it. Or, as I said before, you can see the point in the bow. You can just see the corner of the transom as well. So you have a great all-round view. You know, it's a long boat, but you can see every corner. 
if you're berthing this side you can see approximately to the pontoon on that side you have cameras both sides so that you can have a camera feed so you can see how close you are to whatever it is you're coming alongside but yeah these twin MAN's ZF gearboxes throttles it's so smooth so so smooth in and out of gear and you have the variable side thruster the bow thruster and stern thruster as well so she's very maneuverable so let's have a closer look on board then and you have to bear in mind that this boat is totally bespoke made entirely to the owner's wishes if you start back here this sunken cockpit you have storage under here there's cleaning supplies in there at the moment nice deep lockers you have a huge locker down here as well like a mini lazarette and actually down there you can connect ropes to the rudder stocks and you can control the rudders from back here if all else were to fail the steering the electronics you could control the boat's rudders stood back there with a pair of ropes so we'll start on deck we'll head up forward right around the boat up onto the aft deck and then we'll go inside and have a look at the interior and all of the machinery and you immediately pick up the exquisite detailing on this boat. This is made completely from scratch. This wonderful stainless steel, the woodwork here, sort of styled on the Mercedes Gullwing. Beautiful detail here on, on both sides. That's the engine vents, but even something like that, the time that's going to make that look beautiful and architectural is so impressive. This wonderful varnished bulwarks here, no railings on this boat, as you can see, the whole sides are nice and tall, so you feel well protected as you make your way forward. Down here you have the fuel fillers, you have them on both sides. Here you can see the red light showing which tanks are full. You have four tanks, capacity of 10,000 litres in total. You have two main bunker tanks and then two wing tanks which feed the engines directly, but you can feed the engines from whichever tanks you want. And the fuel is polished between the tanks so you know that whatever's going into the engines is as clean as possible. Here you have a light prism, so that draws light down, down into the cabins below. Very nice little touch, you'll see the effect of that when we go inside. And you have a little railing here, so if you are heading forward in heavy weather, you have got something to grab onto if you need it. And it's down here, you've got big open scuppers. So if you take a big wave over the bow, water just runs off the deck quickly and out down the side of the boat. And then we get up here to the foredeck. You have twin anchors, a bit more storage up front, a very deep locker here where you have access to both your the anchor chains, but there's also some storage in the middle. And this hatch here is above the master cabin. And this is a really nice spot. You can just picture yourself sat here, maybe pootling along at about 10 knots. It'd be lovely to be up here catching the sun on a day like this today, away from everybody else, very private. It's a lovely place to take in the surroundings. So we'll keep moving around. There are side doors on both sides. We'll see those from the inside in a moment. Then you have this short run of steps up onto the aft deck where you have the Williams jet rib lives up here. You have a crane on the other side of it. So the crane here under this cover is your used to winch the tender down into the water. Here you have a wet bar, teak topped, sink and grill up here. And that is to serve this wonderful central dining area. Really, really well protected because it's down below the helm. So even when you're moving along, you're sitting in here, you'll be nice and protected from the elements. And as you can see, you have the seating spanning both sides and of course the table will then open to meet the other side there's a little leg that fits in down there to give it some support this side flips out and then you can sit all of your guests around this magnificent table in comfort and in good protection from the helm station and the windscreen put that back what a wonderful centerpiece that is and nice how when it's upside down it's got fiddles built in so you can put stuff on that table and they're not going to fall off they're going to slide but they'll hit that edge good sensible boat building as you would expect from a yard who are known for building sailing boats now we're up to the outside helm to starboard you have your twin navigator bench these stid seats really comfortable multi-adjustable they are going to put a footrest in here actually so that 
people sitting here have got a bit of support under their feet but just look at I mean the details on this boat I could go on for hours but just look at the way that this handhold is integrated into this upright here it is just exquisite everywhere you look there is beautiful detail the outdoor helm what I love about this area is the mix of digital and analog so you have your two Ray Marine MFDs you have all the mod cons you'd expect of a modern cruising boat but you have that balance with you know, beautiful woodwork beautiful stainless steel you have proper switching here you have these two old school but really nicely presented analog rev counters it's a really nice mix you have the sea zone screen here where you have control of all of the boat systems from your fingertips this boat has humphrey interceptors it also has sleipner vector fin stabilizers here you have your proportional bow and stern thrusters and then you have the twin throttles this boat has autopilot as well of course but this is a really wonderful place to drive the boat from so on the inside it's just a feast of varnished mahogany it took six months to varnish the interior alone gives you an idea of the amount of work that went into this boat a team of sort of six to eight people with contractors coming in now and then built this boat over a period of it should be two years it took three because of coronavirus but the work that's gone into this thing is outstanding immediately to port you have your communication area you also have the ac dc panels as i said everything can be controlled from the bonding screens at the helm but you also have your manual switching here so you can get to it really quickly really clearly and really easily I like these light switches as well they really suit the boat's aesthetic but it's all modern leds you have down lighting you have backlighting as well and they're also dimmable but i just love the fact that they look you know classic and traditional really nice touch the woodwork is just magnificent there's no other word for it then we come to the lower helm and this is imposing it's upright again it's got that mix of the analog and the digital and here you can see the c zone controls where you have control of everything from you, know, you can see the engines you can see the fuel system you can see alarms you can see tankage that's all there at your fingertips the wheel is set in the middle so that you can walk between the two seats and go straight to the wheel without having to slide in past the seats that was a request of the owner and you have the throttles just to hand here because of course if you're going along and it's nice and clear you just sit back in one of these seats with the autopilot on and let the boat do the work. Special, special place to be down here. And what you might not expect is to find parts from a combine harvester in this boat, but because combine harvesters have the best demisters because there's so much glass on them, that's where Spirit got the demister fans from. Powerful stuff, no stone unturned in pursuit of perfection for Spirit. So we'll head forward first. Before we do, you can just see this nice double bench here. It means that two other people can sit in here in shelter and sit forward. It's high enough that you can see forward, see where you're going. And of course you have a proper navigator's chair to starboard. And then here you have a proper chart table, storage underneath for paper charts, pilot guides, a light here as well, real nice area. Again, thickly fiddled so things can't slide off and land on the floor when the boat is moving along. Here you can see those side doors from the inside. Just look at that mechanism. Beautiful. And then moving forward, we arrive in what I think is my favorite area on the P70, this wonderful forward deck saloon. Windows all the way around, so you've got a great view out in the day, but at night you can put this subtle under lighting on, sit around, have a drink. It's comfortable, it's cozy, it's sociable. There's a television that pops up from this panel here. You've got a sound system in here as well. Just be a really wonderful place to entertain friends. You have storage underneath each seat and underneath this footstool slash coffee table, you have storage for bottles and for glasses as well, so you can make drinks here. There's also a fridge down here, of course, so you don't have to go down to the galley to get cold drinks. Just think that's a wonderful area. And then from here, the owner can go directly down into their cabin. Now this owner chose to have the master cabin forward. Spirit have drawn a version with the master cabin aft, but 
as we'll see later on, the owner wanted to have guests on this boat to have their own space, to be completely separate from him and have their own private area, hence why the guest cabin's at the stern, but more of that later on. For now, we'll just take in this master cabin. Again, it's the craftsmanship down here. It just takes your breath away. It is so, so beautiful. Huge bed, set quite high, but you can see you've got steps to help yourself into bed and then you have controls down here for the fusion stereo system again you've got c-zone down here which will control air conditioning things like that storage under the bed you have a couple of wardrobes up at the head of the bed it's reading lamps as well and then the escape hatch overhead but just look at the headroom look at the space above the bed it feels really grand nice classic round portholes but because of the size of the bed they can be quite big so they do let a good amount of natural light in and then we're into the heads compartment, which amazingly has a bath. Now there's a first on a boat of this size. I'm not sure I've seen a bath. Certainly not a wooden one before. Again, at the owner's request, they fitted a bath in. They even have bespoke fill and flush for the toilet. Usually with Tecmar, you get a plastic rocker switch no, 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 here you've got proper milled switches. Lovely stuff. We're moving aft now, out of the master cabin, and we're into a single guest cabin, captain cabin. It can be a study. It's quite flexible, really. At the moment, it's set up as a single bed, as you can see, and it's got its own wet room. But you could just as easily take that mattress off there, put a chair in there, and then you've got yourself a little desk so you can work here. But quite a flexible space this, and obviously it's up at the forward end of the boat. And again, if this is gonna be used by crew, from here, they have direct access to a quite staggering engine room. Look at the headroom in here. A 70 foot boat. It is extraordinary. Workbench as you come in, beautifully lit as well. Really good artificial lighting in here. If I just show you, that's me. Look at the headroom, astonishing. Sorry if it's a bit noisy, the engine fans are still on. But then this is boat is about going places, it's about redundancy, the owner doesn't want to get caught out, so it has to have an engine room where you can work on things and you can access things easily. So because it's so light, you don't need a massive engine block, you've got 800 horsepower engines, they're a little bit smaller, so it's easy to get around them, there's plenty of space above them as well. You can get down to the back of the engines, get down towards the shaft couplings. Got the generator here. Got the air conditioning units back here. Have your fuel filters. Very clearly on show here. Raw, raw water here, it's all very easy to get to, easy to manage. An owner run boat, it needs to be easy to look after. They've even managed to get some space to store items up here in the top of the engine room. It is immaculate. It would be a boat that would be a pleasure to work on as an engineer. So now we'll head back through the forward saloon. Another side door on this side. Go back up to the wheelhouse. Now compared to a normal 70 foot flybridge or sports cruiser you've got lots of level changes it's not open plan it doesn't feel light and airy you've got narrow passageways but that isn't the point this is a boat to go to sea it has a narrow beam and it has cozy comfortable interior spaces if we just stop halfway down the stairs here you have a little day heads so the guests can just come down here to use the toilet in the day so they don't have to go all the way back to their cabins quite a good handy place to have that we come down here, we get to the heart of the boat. Look at that. The galley living space. And it feels like a home from home. A full size oven, full size microwave. You have an induction hob. You have a dishwasher down here. All finished in that exquisite mahogany. Twin sink. This window actually drops down so you can get a bit of ventilation here in the galley. Bespoke storage for everything, bespoke storage for glasses, crockery, cutlery, it's all here. You 
beautifully done. You can imagine yourself hosting a big family breakfast here, just having a, a lovely time in this really sociable space where, cleverly, even though you're low down, you can still see out. You see how the bulwarks on the outside have dropped down so you still have a view out when you're sitting here in these seats. This seat pops out here, so that swivels round. Usually that's just a stool, really uncomfortable for longer periods of time, but you can pop this backrest up so someone could sit there quite comfortably. And of course you have this bench here as well. You have a wine store under here, a bit more storage under here. That folds back down and folds away. Big double American style fridge here. There's plenty of cooling space on board this boat. Television up here. And then these are these light prisms mounting the deck and they bring light down and then disperse it inside the interior. Really neat sort of yacht style, sailing boat style trick, but it really suits this boat and it works well. And this is actually reinforcement for the deck crane for the tender, but they sort of made it part of the interior, this beautiful polished stainless steel. Uh, you know, it's not an eyesore. Yes, it's structural, but it, it looks beautiful. You like being able to see having that stuff on show. This here is a staircase right up straight back to the aft deck. You can just see that's the, that's the tender there. So there's a hatch in the deck and you can come straight down to this area if you want to. And this is what I was talking about, about the owner wanting guests to have their own space. So guests have got two cabins back here. They're identical. I'll show you this one because this one's made up, but there's two and they're exactly the same. Twin berths, nice and bright. Two big portholes with ventilation. Finished to exactly the same high standard, obviously. There's a bit of storage down there as well. They have a split bathroom. So one side is a shower room, quite a big shower room actually. And then if we flip the other way, you have the toilet and sink. Also means that guests, one can shower, one can use the toilet or the sink at the same time, much better than having a combined toilet and shower. But what I was saying is that now guests in the morning, they can wake up from their cabins and they're in the kitchen. They can make some breakfast, they can make a coffee. They don't need to disturb the owner. The owner doesn't need to host them. They can just come in here, be perfectly comfortable, make something to eat or drink and, and head up back on deck. The P70 is a bewitching mix of timeless styling that harks back to express cruisers of a bygone era and bang up to date technology. Yes, the yacht achieves its cruising brief, but it's about so much more than stark figures on a piece of paper. The numbers are impressive, but it's this yacht's inimitable character and soul and the painstaking care that has gone into its creation that leave a lasting impression.